Hello everybody and today I am going to show you the immortal game played between Adolf Andersen and Lionel Kizeritsky in 1851. So let's go. It started off with e4, e5 and then Andersen played f4, so called King's Gambit. It is a dubious opening. Uh, there, there are currently I think a lot of ways to refute it. Uh, but back then it was a very nice opening. Still, now it gets also good results, but white sometimes doesn't get very good play. Okay, uh, kids risky too, bishop c4, uh, and then queen h4, check. A little bit weird move. Usually it's better to play something like knight c6, or I think even d5 or knight f6. So I think this moves this, or this with simple development, or even this. Are pretty good uh, but okay Queen h4 was played uh, okay so it's it's a very logical move the idea is to make the white king castleless by a uh, king f1 right so you wasted a tempo with your queen trying to to make the king castleless but then you also will the queen may get in trouble okay black played b5 sacrifice the pawn another interesting idea uh, most likely it would be better to simply develop something like knight c6 and then after knight f3, go back with your queen. And something like bishop c5, knight f6, d4, and black would have been fine. After b5, Anderson took the pawn. I mean, he, he sacrificed the pawn with the king's gambit. And then taking the pawn back is quite an advan uh, quite an achievement, I think. So you already, you're not gambiting anymore to, somewhat because you got the pawn back from the gambit. Knight f6 was played, attacking the e4 pawn. Knight f3, attacking the queen. As I told you guys, the queen can be in trouble because now black has to waste one more tempo moving the queen. d3, mm, slight inaccuracy. Most likely d4 or knight c3 would be better. For example, d4, because if c6 now, the bishop can return to d3. And if black takes the pawn, then there is queen e2, f5, knight c3, the knight can be weak. This, this. And then the play is very weird. Uh, but yeah, d3 is, even though Stockfish says it's maybe not the best move, it is a very logical human move, you know, just protecting, simply protecting the weak pawn. So it's a good move. Then black plays knight h5, a little bit. Uh, feels weird. Sure, there's this great idea of knight g5 and then fork in the king and the rook, but it's a little bit out of place, I'd say. Uh, computer suggests playing c6, bishop c4, and then something like bishop c5, just uh, finishing the development, you know. Uh, d4, you provoked d4, so now the pawn hangs, knight c3 castles, it's more or less about equal, and yeah, it would be fine for both sides. Uh, black queen is quite bad right right here, but white skin is also not so good, so it is uh, it is a double-edged position. And the game was played knight h5, uh, black, white found an interesting move knight h4 to refute the threat of knight c because the idea of, right, uh, for example, white plays, I know, knight c3, then simply knight g3, and then if takes queen h1, and black simply wins in exchange. So knight h4 was an interesting way. The idea now if takes, if knight g3, we simply take, and then queen doesn't threaten the rook anymore. And uh, yeah, white is completely winning. Though, okay, knight h4 might have been an inaccuracy, but it's a very good move. Computer suggests rook g1, but it's a crazy unhuman like move idea is g4 but yeah i really like knight h4 move which was played in the game queen g5 a uh, nice move attacking both the knight and the bishop white played knight f5 protecting the knight and the bishop uh c6 and then g4 a little bit weird move uh it is it's just, yeah, it's most likely a mistake but as in 1851 most moves weren't as great as to our standards already now but yeah from human point of view it's a good move uh so g4 computer suggests just returning with your bishop and then after g6 playing knight g3 and then black plays knight g7 but that is completely crazy line i don't even imagine somebody going for it so i play g4 knight f6 rook g1 now the idea is if black takes cb which happened in the game White already gets h4, and then we'll come back to that later. White already gets a, spo sl a slight spoiler. White gets a good, good advantage here. After knight f6, rook g1, 
the best move for black would have been h5 and then after h4 you play queen g6 another idea is that the bishop and the pawn hang and if you move the bishop uh, pretty much you win the pawn and then the queen is quite okay plays black can play like d5 bishop of five on something so queen g6 black is fine so h5 and if h for this and if you play g5 as uh, this black gets a nice move knight to g4 and then d5 very sharp but black should be better because they have nice nice pieces compared to white very passive pieces as you can see but again the game was c takes b then h4 forcing the queen to go back to g6 h5 um, the idea is that okay you sacrifice the piece uh, but after black plays queen g5 which happened in the game there is queen of shame and now as you can see why it has two gigantic threats first one is simply to take bishop f4 and it turns out that queen has no squares to come back for example a6 bishop f4 the queen is completely stuck as you can see if g6 it's protected by the uh, the pawn if h6 it is protected by the knight and the bishop and h4 protected by the knight as well and g4 of course protected by the rook and the queen and f5 protected by the pawn so everything's protected and yeah white simply wins a queen so black played knight g8 it's a logical move right at the same time protecting from e5 with tempo and bishop f4 knight g8 white still played bishop f4 queen of six knight c3 just developing and now as you can see the sides have turned from a variation we've seen here where black has very active pieces compared to white very passive sides and turned and here white sacrificed the piece but as you can see look at white's pieces right all are already looking forward to keen and all that stuff you know it they can be very dangerous and also very well advanced pawns and look at the black pieces uh six out of seven of them are on the first rank so they haven't developed at all so the piece is not really black doesn't feel the extra piece at all and queen cat can get uh lost somewhere in tactical uh difficulties so in the game was played bishop c5 then white plays knight d5 very nice attacking move with the threat of knight c7 and knight of six winning the queen black play queen b2 threatening the rook and here white ignored that the rook was hanging and they played bishop d6 uh, funnily enough now stockfish says that bishop d6 isn't actually a brilliancy it is a complete blunder but yeah back then it was really un, un just hard to calculate right without engines okay now stockfish says you should have played rookie one and then if takes the rook then there is knight d6 king d8 if king f8 there is a brilliant bishop e5 threatening the queen and threatening the mate right and if king to d8 then simply takes takes this and after king g8 there is a brilliant move bishop e5 i think uh and the idea is if queen takes there is this queen e8 queen e8 and mate and if something else the queen just falls off the board so okay rookie one but okay bishop d6 which was played in the game which felt brilliant is actually a mistake uh black played bishop d1 a variation was said that if bishop d6 white takes the bishop back this takes the pawn check knight d6 and then king d8 queen of eight mate nice line uh in the game was played bishop d1 but stockfish apparently says that after queen a1 a uh, very nice move king e2 and then and then apparently after king e2 uh stockfish is still unsure i mean it's completely crazy because for a second stockfish was saying this is winning now it's saying it's losing because of brilliant e5 and then these three pieces and a queen have super strong attack against the king i think this actually happened in the game exact same position so we'll get to that later but queen a1 was the best move and then after queen b2 black keeps the advantage the idea is if white takes the bishop there is queen c2 taking the bishop and then after this this queen f4 crazy line since it's somehow equal but yeah queen b2 bishop c5 if not bishop c5 black actually has the advantage but okay in the game was played bishop g1 white plays e5 they sacrifice the second rook but they make black take it but now with this move e5 queen has lost uh queen has lost 
control over the g7 square, as you can see. Oops. Black plays 96, and there was a decisive blunder. They should have tried with the only move bishop a6, then knight c7, king d8, knight a6, queen c3, bishop c7, some crazy, crazy lines computer suggests. Knight c6, knight a8, white would be still completely winning, but g6, the black still can be in the game. But okay, yeah, bishop b6 was the only try. Black played 96 in the game, protecting the c7 square, but here, White had a brilliant mate in three. I recommend you guys to pause the video and find the mate. All right, everybody, I really hope you found the mate. And the mating idea is knight g7, forcing the king go to d8, and then we sacrifice the queen with queen of six, checking the king. The only move is knight of six, and after bishop e7, that is checkmate. And that is how the immortal game was played. It was a really interesting game. Of course, Stockfish is not saying it was as perfect as it seems, but yeah, at 1851, I mean, you gotta respect that 170 years ago, this beauty of a game was played. And then, yeah, White sacrificed a lot, a lot of... White literally sacrificed everything except three minor pieces. Well, Black had all of their pieces left and White still won. So that was a very beautiful game. I really, really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, write down suggestions for the next videos if you have any. And yeah, I hope you really love the video and I'll see you all next time. Take care, everybody, and bye-bye.